Facebook stock, just think about the nature of a Facebook stock shareholder's life right now. They wake up every single morning and they see further declines. More pain taking place within the marketplace, more doubt prevailing around their company. Look at this. Down today, another 2.11%. Another aggressive decline. Is it justified? Is it reasonable? The company now trades at a 13.37 PE. Absolutely absurd in my eyes. Five-day returns now down 12 0.33% year to date, down 45.62%. This $84 current price, that's a new low. Keeps going lower, lower, and lower. More and more pain prevailing for these shareholders. So what should they be doing? What should they be listening to? What should their play be in this type of marketplace today of all days? Well, I saw this article came out today. Credit Suisse slash price targets on Google and Meta ahead of Corley Earnings. Now, if you read into that headline alone, if you think about the nature of the headline alone, you'll think, well, that's bad. They're slashing price targets. Clearly, bad things are happening. Corley Earnings could disappoint. We could see these price targets going even lower. But have you actually looked at the price targets? Have you actually analyzed how much upside analysts are pricing on these two stocks? I want to show you. Now, do I say you follow along with the analysts are saying all the time? No. I think it's important you conduct your own research, you look into the businesses you're buying yourself. But if we actually look at what their price targets are, if we just investigate for a moment what they think about these two companies. Now, the price target was cut for Google. The price target on Google cut from 3,500 down to 3,450. So the price target was cut by $50. And yet the headline makes you so scared, so afraid. Massive price target cuts, massive quarterly earnings stress around this. That's not true. It's a price cut of 50%. There's still 34.3% upside in the stock based upon what these analysts are saying. Now, it's the same story with Meta. Same story with Facebook. Yes, the price cut was of a larger degree. Yes, a cut from a price target of 336 down to 272. But relative to the current trading price of 184, that still represents around 40% upside. So, yes, there have been price cuts. Yes, there are negative things prevailing around the business. Yes, people are saying call the earnings could disappoint. But look at those price targets. Those are the conservative price targets of the analysts from Credit Suisse. Relative to the current trading price, that's still massive upside. That's still a massive, massive opportunity. People are getting caught up in the news cycle getting caught up in the headlines, getting caught up in the doubt around these businesses right now. It's not only with Facebook, it's across the market more broadly. People getting caught up in what the news is saying rather than what's actually happening with the businesses they own. Yes, Facebook could underperform quarterly earnings. There could be disappointment on a quarterly basis. We could see potentially even more user declines. These things could all happen. But the truth of the matter is, if you don't focus on those short-term struggles, those short-term pains in the stock, and you actually focus on the underlying nature of the company, we're talking the profitability, we're talking the financial strength, the current valuation at present, you focus on these things, it gets a whole lot clearer. The investing game becomes a whole lot more simple. A tremendous degree of financial strength with Facebook. Tremendous degree. Cash to debt ratio of 3.46. High equity to assets. And even higher Altman score of 10.51. Very, very impressive on a financial strength basis. And yet, the market continues to act as if there's no financial strength there. That this is some sort of degrading business. A failing business that has no underlying quality. It is simply not true. When you analyze the fundamentals, you look at the tangible numbers associated with this company, you get a very, very different picture. Healthy cash debt, healthy equity assets, high Altman score, large degree of financial stability. And it's the same story of profitability, high net margins, high returns on equity, high returns on assets. Not only a strong underlying capital light business, but also a tremendous degree of managerial competency. People allocating capital well within Facebook, consistent and high returns over time. What's not to like? What's not to like about this company? Well, on a fundamental level, to be honest with you, it's very hard to talk badly of Facebook, to talk badly of the company. They're even buying back stock. 
They're even making aggressive stock repurchases utilizing their excess free cash flow. They're rewarding shareholders. They're growing in terms of profitability, net margins, very impressive, profitability, financial strength, everything is there. When a company is being held down, not by the lack of financial strength, but by the lack of positive news, the lack of social, political sentiment around the company, that's the time to investigate. That's the time to have a look at the business and say, is there a buying opportunity present? Is it time to get into the stock? And after the declines we've seen, after such rapid declines over the past few days, continuing to fall, six months returns now down 43.99%, one month returns of negative 13.17%. We had a little uptick, had a little uptick in price. We thought maybe, maybe there's an opportunity to, to make some money back, but no, we're down again. New lows, new pain for investors. Don't buy into the pain. Don't listen to the pain. Don't allow the pain to inform your investment decisions. Because the moment you do that, the moment you let fear, doubt, uncertainty dictate your investment decisions, decide what you buy and what you sell and how you act within this marketplace, that is the time at which you give up those long-term returns. That's the time at which you lose the potential of profitable market outperformance over the next 10, 15, 20 years. Those little mistakes, those little emotionally driven decisions, those are the things that make you lose over long term. It's been true for decades in the marketplace. It remains true. It will stay true going forward over the next 10 years, going forward over the next 15 years. I believe that absolutely. Now, you may say Facebook is hitting all-time, not all-time lows, but new lows on the year. What should we be doing? What's the valuation like? How much upside is present? Let's have a look at evaluation. Let's see how much upside potential I think is present. You know, Credit Suisse had a price target of around 272. I think that's a bit conservative. I think if you price in even the lowest degree of growth on Facebook going forward, a 5% growth rate going forward, that's your price target. A price target of $187.01 with only a 5% growth rate. A very, very advantageous position to be in. That's taken off the 12-month trailing earnings figure of $13.80 a share, a 9% discount rate. It's still a buy. But what if we got more reasonable? What if we got more realistic in our assumptions? Because realistically, over the past decade, this company has grown at 68.5%. Five-year growth, 27.8%. One-year growth, 36.65%. So, you may very well say, those growth rates are far higher relative to what's being priced in. Yes, they are. But what you need to take into account is the lack of potential growth perpetuating over the next 12 months. Management has stipulated around 3 to 11% growth over the next 12 months. Yes, that may come to fruition. Yes, there may be lower growth rates over the next 12 months. I understand that absolutely. Apple's privacy changes a massive hindrance on growth going forward. But after that, once we overcome that hurdle, once we reinvigorate growth, we transition away from newsfeed towards reels, once we get this business rolling again, would something like 10, 15% growth be so unjustified? I don't believe so. In fact, I believe a 15% growth rate is achievable going forward over the next decade consistently. I don't think 15% growth is unreasonable. I think it's fairly justified going forward. And if we price in 15% growth going forward over the next decade, look at the price target we get. That's using that same earnings figure of a 12-month trailing basis and that same 9% discount rate. Look at the fair value. A fair value of $371.31. Massive upside potential. Relative to the current trading price of $184, more than doubling your money. That is the type of opportunity that remains present. That is the type of opportunity that comes when you have a market fueled by doubt, fueled by anxiety, fueled by a lack of rationality. Yes, you may be new to the market. You may be a new investor seeing these declines coming into the market and thinking, well, is it time to buy? To me, it looks fairly advantageous. I encourage you to conduct your own research, to look into the business yourself, investigate what's going on within the marketplace before you make any moves. But if you come to the same conclusion as me through your own research, I think it's pretty clear. Pretty clear that there remains a very advantageous buying opportunity present. This company's undervalued. Definitively so. 
And combined with the doubt in the marketplace, combined with the fear prevailing throughout all these companies more broadly, I'd say it's time to get in. I think it's a fairly advantageous buy. So if you enjoyed this video, if you have to learn something more about my thoughts on Facebook stock right now after the continued declines, then please drop us a like down below. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. If there's a company you want me to talk about in the next video, then please just comment down below. would love to hear your thoughts. But until then, thank you. I'll see you in the next one.